Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Congratulations! You're about to start Algebra 1. And good news, Algebra is like a puzzle. It's like a game. You've got to learn a couple rules. But once you learn them, it's just like solving a puzzle. It's the fun part about math. Yeah, Algebra can be fun. So we'll start with a little bit of Algebra humor. First of all, what is an algebraic symbol? <laughs> ah, stop laughing. I know that was hilarious, but let's try another one. Okay, okay. Hopefully I'm better at explaining algebra than making you laugh. So let's start with a couple of rules that you need to know in order to do algebra. Or actually, these are definitions. These are the, the fundamental parts of algebra. And those include a variable, an algebraic expression, and an algebraic equation. Well, what's a variable? Well, a variable is a letter used to represent one or more numbers. You're going to discover that in algebra, some of the numbers we don't know. We don't know exactly what that number is going to be, so we represent that unknown number with a letter like X or A or B. An algebraic expression is an expression that includes at least one variable. And an algebraic equation is a math sentence formed by placing the equal sign between two expressions. Let's look at some examples. What do we use for variables? Well, we can use A, B, C, Z, H, X. We can use any letter to represent the unknown number. What's an algebraic expression? Well, that's where we use a variable in a mathematical expression. In this case, it says 3 times some unknown number X plus 6. And what's an algebraic equation? Well, it's like this. 5 times x equals 35. And you're going to be asked to figure out what x equals. Now, 5 times x equals 35. That, that seems vague. I mean, what, what does that really mean? Well, let's show you an example. What if the situation were this? You have some friends. You take some friends to the movies. Tickets are $5 each, and you spend $35. How many friends, which we'll call X, did you take to the movies? Well, we've got a 5 in this uh, uh, word problem. The tickets are $5 each. And we have a 35 in this word problem. You spent a total of $35. And we've got an X in this word problem. That's the number of tickets you bought or the number of friends you took to the movies. And you, it seems, I'm sure it seems reasonable to you if you're figuring out how much you'd spend at $5 a ticket, you'd multiply that $5 times the number of people you took to the movies. And that would equal 35. So that algebraic expression says $5 times the number of people I take to the movies equals $35. And remember, we don't know what x is. In algebra, we're going to be asked to solve for x. I know, I know. I told you that algebra was fun. And it is. But it's important to remember that the whole purpose of algebra and the whole purpose of math is to model the real world so we can apply mathematical tools to real world situations and understand them better. That means we have to be able to translate English sentences into mathematical expressions. 
And here we're asked to write an expression for the product of 9 and x. Well, I'm going to circle 9 and I'm going to circle x because I know my answer is going to include 9 and x. And I know that I'm probably going to either add 9 and x or subtract 9 from x or subtract x from 9 or multiply them or divide them. I'm going to do some mathematical operation to those. And if I read the sentence, it's going to help me figure out what mathematical operation is going to go on between 9 and x. And in the sentence it says, the product of 9 and x. Product, that's the answer when you do a multiplication problem. So, I want to multiply 9 times x. Now, in all likelihood, they're also going to ask you to evaluate that expression, 9x, for the time when x equals 4. You remember x can equal anything. It can equal minus a million, it can equal plus 20. It could be any number. But here they're telling us to assume that x equals 4 and figure out what 9 times 4 equals. So I'm just going to substitute 4 for x. And then they ask me to evaluate it, which means simplify it or carry out the math. And I know that 9 times 4 equals 36. Here's another example. Write a math expression for this phrase. 4 times the sum of 3 and a number z. Well, I'm going to circle the numbers, 4, 3, and z. And I'm pretty sure that a 4, a 3, and a z will end up in my answer to this problem. Now I just got to figure out how am I going to combine those, the 4, the 3, and the z. Am I going to use plus signs, minus signs, multiply signs, equal signs? What, what mathematical symbols am I going to use to combine those numbers? Well, it says four times, four times. That's, I got to put in a time sign. Four times. And then it says the sum of three and a number z. So that's three plus z. Now, this is, it gets a little tricky here because you got to remember that it says four times the sum. It doesn't say four times three. It doesn't say four times z. It says four times the sum of 3 and a number z. So I need to sum 3 plus z before I multiply. Now, mathematicians are all really lazy. And they just hate writing extra symbols. And that little star in there, that's an extra symbol. They're going to want to get rid of that star. And they're just going to want to push that 4 over next to the parentheses. And that means 4 times the expression 3 plus z. Now they're going to ask me to evaluate that expression and in this case they're going to say evaluate it for the time when z equals 6. So I'm going to substitute 6 for z and then I'm going to remember PEMDAS, my order of operations. I got to do what's in the parentheses first. So I'm going to add 3 plus 6 and that equals 9 and then I'm going to multiply that times 4, and 4 times 9 equals 36. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, they've asked me to write an expression for this situation. Each person's share if P people divide 16 slices of pizza equally. Well, I've circled the P and I've circled the 16 because I know my expression is going to include a P and a 16. Now I just got to figure out how to combine the P and the 16. Do I add, subtract, multiply, divide? Well, let's read the question and see if we can figure it out. It says, each person share if P people divide 16 slices. We're going to divide 16 slices among P people. So we're going to divide 16 by P. My expression is 16 divided by P. Now it's going to ask me to evaluate the expression for the time when P equals 4. 
That means I'm going to substitute 4 for P, and it's going to read 16 divided by 4. And 16 divided by 4 equals 4. Try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then move on to my answer on the next slide. You know, one of the requirements of a lot of math, and algebra in particular, is to be able to translate an English sentence into a mathematical expression. So let's work on that. And one of the things I do is to circle the numbers. I've got this, this question, write the sentence as an equation. 240 is equal to the product of 16 and k. Well, let's circle the numbers. I know my answer is going to include 240, 16, and k. Now, how do I combine those? Well, there's going to be some clues in the sentence. It says six, 240 is equal to the product of 16 and k. Well, I can make that, that into an algebraic expression. It's going to read 240. I just bring that 240 up. Just bring it right up to there. And then it says is equal to. Well, I'm going to bring that equal right up and put it next to the 240. And then it says the product of 16 and k. The product means multiply. So I'm going to multiply 16 and k. Now here's something you should remember. You know, you used to use an x symbol to represent multiplication. But now we're into algebra and you can't use that x symbol anymore. That x symbol is a variable. You can't say 16xk and, and assume people will understand that means 16 times k. You can use these little star symbols like I put right here and that means multiply by 16 multiplied by k. But mathematicians are lazy they don't want to put that star symbol. They don't want to use an X. They don't want to use a star, both of which equal multiply. They just want to get rid of that star, get rid of that X, and write it as 16K. That means 16 times K. Well, that's our first algebra lesson. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you thought it was fun. Now it's time to test your skills with worksheets and quizzes at www.mastermath.info. You can download the worksheets, you can download an answer sheet for the worksheet, and you can take an online quiz that will explain to you how to do any problems that you get wrong. Well, I hope you had fun. I hope you come back soon. See ya.